paintings, drawings, iconography. All of this done by one Ukrainian artist who survived a Siberian concentration camp, eventually managed to bring his family to Canada and created a life for himself doing what he loved. This is the story of Vadim Doberlij. He was an artist first and foremost. And what he was portraying was the world as he saw it. My name is Natalia Dobrodir, and I am the daughter of the artist Vadim Dobrodir. While working in Kiev in the mid-1930s, he was accused by the Soviets of painting a Ukrainian symbol and was sentenced to Siberia. After two years there, he was about to be killed. But the commandant, instead of shooting everybody in the back of the neck, which is what they mostly would have done, opened the gates and said, go home, boys. He went home to Kiev. During the Second World War, he escaped the Nazis, wound up in a German displaced persons camp at Heidenau, and in 1948 made his way to Alberta, Canada. He had a very good start when we came to Edmonton. He was hired by the Hudson's Bay as a display person, and soon he became the chief of the display. He progressed to the point where in two years he felt able to strike out on his own, and he did. Taking jobs wherever he could, Doberlige created stage sets, painted landscapes, designed restaurant interiors, and everything in between. The fact that he was a full-time artist is one of the things that impresses me the most. He was able to support his family with a career that a lot of people think you're not going to make it, and especially during the era that he lived. I'm Larissa Sembalik Chaladin and I'm an artist and a researcher at the Cool Folklore Centre, and I'm a big fan of Vadim Dobrodij. He was the man in the crowd that looked like an artist. He wore a beret, and he had these features and this look that he was always taking in information when he was in the crowd, whether he was looking at people. Now that I see his work, I realize that he was doing research 24-7. Some of his most famous work was done in St. John's Cathedral in Edmonton, Alberta, where he painted the icons and designed the Iquanastas. That's what really excites me about our collection, is that we've got a record of how he was thinking, the different colors he was trying, the way he sketched it out. And then from this point, he would then have done a full-size drawing and then taken it onto the wood to, to carve it. Now, we found amongst all his sketches, this particular one, that it's for a fashion show, but there's no doubt he was in Equinostas mode when he was designing it. I mean, to me, he's, he's someone who, despite inordinately difficult circumstances, managed to create beautiful things. My name is Margaret, and my father was a collector of the work of Vadim Dobolit. Yeah, this is one of my favorites, and it had to do with the glasses, or the glass, because I'd never seen anything like the light coming through that glass. That fascinated me as a kid. I, I couldn't figure out how someone could do that with paint. He was always really intense and very dedicated to whatever he was doing and to his art. And that really comes across, I think, in that pencil drawing. He was painting and drawing and designing. He was doing what he loved for his mother nation. He was contributing to Canadian society, to the Ukrainian community here, and he was doing what he loved to do. Um, his whole life wasn't easy, from having been in, imprisoned and having to make his way across Ukraine to Germany during a war, 
And then coming to Canada and not taking for granted the freedom that he now had, he uh, pursued it how best he could, doing what he loved. And I think anyone now in this day and age can look at that and take that as inspiration and continue on, do what you love to do.